Hello everyone, this is LB3 of LB3 Scouting, and this is a new video series that I'm doing that I am going to, for now, dub Quarterback Talking Quarterbacks. Uh, I'm joined by a good friend of mine, Chase Crouch, who the former uh, Illinois starting quarterback. He is has agreed to do this series with me, uh, where he's going to join me as a former quarterback, and uh, just we're going to talk quarterback together and try and go through some of the strengths and uh, weaknesses of the upcoming quarterback class. I thought it would be a really fun insight to someone who knows the position really well. How are you doing, Chase? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you for coming on and doing this with me. And for the first video, we're going to go ahead and do quarterback Jacob Eason of Washington, formerly of Georgia, transferred to Washington after he lost his starting job to Jake Fromm. Uh, so we're going to, what we've done here is I picked out a series of clips that I thought represented a strength or a weakness. I said put them into sets for that strength or weakness. And I sent the set of clips to Chase, and we taught, and he told me what he thought the strength or weakness was after watching it. And now we're gonna go ahead and uh, get into that. So Chase, what? So let's start with the first set. Obviously, when we were watching it, when you were watching it, what did you think? If you want to like go by clip by clip, or just talk about the whole set in general, either way works. Yeah, absolutely. So in this first set here. Um, the first thing that jumped out at me was, you know, everybody knows Jacob Eason has a very strong arm and he can drive the ball downfield. Um, but, you know, a strength of his is his quick release. He really gets the ball out of his hand um, quickly and almost violently to the point where he's super accurate and his short intermediate throws are on time. And, you know, this is a great strength of his because normally when you have a quarterback with a super strong arm, um, sometimes you see them struggling with that short to intermediate pass game in terms of touch or in terms of having a longer wind-up release. And that doesn't seem to be an issue here with Jacob Beeson. Yeah, I would say that his arm – so I did – going into these sets, I did not tell J Chase what the strengths and weaknesses are. And so he, he – told me what he thought they were after watching. And he was right on this one. He guessed uh, arm strength and being able to make all NFL throws, and that is correct. And you see it, what I really like is a lot of times when we talk about arm strength for players, we're, we talk a lot about throwing it downfield, throwing it really far, throwing it 50 yards, whatever. And really, most college quarterbacks can throw it 50 yards when they, when they get to that point. Of course, there are exceptions, but most quarterbacks can throw it far. Maybe they can't throw it hard and far, but most can throw it far. But the big difference... In the NFL going to college, what you really want to look for in arm strength is can they, when they're on the far hash, can they make throws to the opposite sideline? In this first clip, that's why I put it first almost, you can see that he throws the ball with good velocity from the far hash to the opposite sideline, and that's, that's what you want to look for in terms of arm strength. You want to see if they can make that pass quick and with velocity because that's one of those ones that's a big difference maker in the NFL. Absolutely. Totally agree with you. And then just the rest of the throws just really showcases arm strength. And he is a little bit inconsistent in both the accuracy and the touch. But when he is on, when he's in the right mindset, it seems like it's some of a mindset with him. Uh, he really can put the ball in a place where few quarterbacks in this draft can. And I think that's what you're looking for with him majorly is he has the an arm tool set that very few quarterbacks in the NFL even have. And it's something that you really need to be a super successful NFL quarterback. Uh, so do you want to do you have anything else to say for set one or would you like to move on to set two? No, I think we covered set one um, right, pretty well. So what did you think of set two? So set two, um, the first thing that jumped out of me once again was, you know, his ability to make those short to intermediate throws um, with ease. But one thing that I did notice and, and it's evident here in this clip versus BYU is sometimes his ability to read um, the shoulders of the linebackers. And what I mean by that is as a quarterback, you know, you're taught that if a linebacker, if their shoulders are open, um, often, you know, they're in a position where they can retreat or come down and make a play on the ball. And if their shoulders are square, um, they're generally playing what's underneath of them. And as a quarterback, you're taught to really throw behind those square shoulders. And in this clip here versus BYU, um, it's, it's evident that, you know, he was unable to read um, the shoulders of the linebackers and kind of settles for a, a check down to the running back here. 
And, you know, it's first and 10. Um, never going to complain about a five-yard gain. But as you see, there's an in-breaking route coming open behind that level um, that could have busted for, you know, a 12, 15. And if you have a receiver that can make some yards after catch, maybe even a longer gain. Um, I'm not necessarily saying that this is a glaring weakness of Jacob Eason, um, but it's definitely an area where, you know, if he's looking for something to improve on, um, it would be reading those levels of linebackers. Yeah, so uh, if I pull up uh, your clip, you did originally say the weakness was reading the linebacker, which is is uh, pretty much what I was going for with these clips, which is what I thought a weakness of his. Uh, you know, I will say as uh, as as we get into this video is that as a former quarterback, I think Chase uh, can be a little bit nicer to the uh, quarterback than I might necessarily or other evaluators might necessarily be. But that's not necessarily a problem with evaluating them because, you know, when you're looking at quarterbacks, you really have to look at the positive. When you're evaluating a prospect, you have to look at the positives that they have because if you just look at the negatives, then no prospect is ever going to be good. And Eason does have some really good strengths. But, yeah, I would say – and something else with these clips, along with what Chase already said, is that a lot of times he seems to get antsy and doesn't, uh, doesn't really stick with the – he has sometimes a lot of really clean pockets in these clips – and he seems to just get antsy about standing there too long uh, and just bails, even if the protection is perfect. Or he'll, or it bails or throws it uh, to a check down when he might have had someone breaking open if he'd held on to the ball a little bit longer. That, so that, I kind of, two, two weaknesses with this clip, but that's, that's it. He didn't, he was too, uh, too checky, to check it down too often to me when there was, might be option, better options, and uh, he had clean protection. So that that was set two. Uh, if we want to move on to set three, if you're ready to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Let's move on to set three. So the first thing in set three that jumped out to me um, was the fact that, you know, Jacob Beeson is a gunslinger, and he's really not afraid to put the ball into tight windows. Um, these clips really jumped out because he's making some gutsy throws. And – a lot of quarterbacks would shy away from making these throws and really be thinking, you know, eh, this isn't the exact coverage I want or this DB doesn't have, you know, the leverage that I'm looking for when I want to attempt this type of throw. But when it comes to Jacob Eason, he has the utmost confidence in his arm strength and his accuracy. And he's got that Brett Favre gunslinger mentality to where he's willing to put the ball in tight windows. And that's something, you know, as a coach, you're sitting there scouting him and you're like, wow, do I, you know, take the dude who isn't fearless and he really, you know, has the confidence of himself to make every throw or is this going to scare me and am I going to view him as too much of a gunslinger um, and instead would I rather have the safer quarterback who, you know, is instead of those making those gussy throws is just going to check it down to something underneath me personally. I love the gunslinger mentality. Um, Brett Favre is one of my favorite quarterbacks, and I think that you know him and Eason do have a lot of similarities when it comes to you know the confidence and their arm strength. Yeah, and what I would add to that is that they he he does he is really trusting his arm, and he does throw it into some tight windows, and that does come to bite him in the butt sometimes. But it does. I think that when you move from college to the NFL. You very rarely does a player get more aggressive. I, I think that that aggression is something that is instilled young, early on in a quarterback's career. It's not really something that a player will get as they they can grow in that much in the NFL. Like it's like there are tra there are traits with quarterbacks you can't really teach that they aren't really going to get if they didn't have in college. Like if a guy has a weak arm in college, he's not going to become a strong arm quarterback in the NFL. And I don't think a you know a very conservative quarterback in college is going to become an aggressive quarterback in the NFL. So I like seeing the aggression because maybe you can tone back the mistakes, work on the accuracy. But if he was wasn't aggressive, then I would worry that he would always be a little play a little bit scared when he's playing quarterback, which is not something I want in my pro quarterback. So I really like seeing those tight window throws. You can see that at times he can really when he steps up into it, gets a good uh, good base, he can really hit it where it needs to go. So I like I really liked uh, seeing that in those clips. Uh, so are you ready for set four? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so moving on to set four here, um, you know one thing I noticed is, and you see it here, 
Um, in this clip verse, who is this? This clip verse Utah um, is he's throwing. It's second and twenty three. Um, quarterback's mentality here, you're thinking, you know, I'm going to get half of this yardage back. Um, I'm, I'm not going to try to force the ball um, in a spot that, you know, is going to put me at risk for a turnover here. I'm just trying to get half of it back um, and set myself up for a third to intermediate um, and give myself an opportunity to get a first down. And here, you know, he gets some pressure in his face and he throws an outbreaking route um, very late. Um, and the DB jumps it and takes it back for six points. So, you know, what I noticed in this set was his ability um, to make plays when you have pressure in your face. You know, he has some opportunities here to use his legs and really try to get outside the pocket, um, redirect some of his receivers in the scramble drill. Um, and he kind of failed to do that amongst these clips. So that was kind of my takeaway is, you know, he's an athletic guy. He's tall. He's lanky. He can move. Um, sometimes he's got to be willing to, you know, use that athleticism when he faces some pressure instead of, you know, throwing off of his back foot. Yeah. So you you, te- you definitely took this uh, this set of clips in more of a positive light than what I would have taken it as. And and this is a really tough one to me. I, when I when I made it, I knew that it would be tough to tough to do because it's something that is kind of personal, but. What I made this out is is he kind I I noticed when I was watching that he does have, and there was a lot more clips than this. It was uh, you know I watched quite a few games uh, getting the clips for this video, uh, where he would stare down receivers and uh, kind of force the ball in there at times, and sometimes it's a it's sometimes in these clips you know it could be uh, the play like you just watch and if you see a, like the linebacker break down throw the ball or something like that just a simple one read play. So, you know, I can't know the full extent of uh, what happens in these plays, but I did notice that sometimes he would just watch, stare at the receiver the whole time, and then the cornerback would see that and know that the ball was coming his way, and that would allow them to make a play. And so, and then also in the clip that you mentioned, he really, this is also another problem that I didn't actually make a set of clips for, is sometimes he will let his base get out of, get out of hand, and he'll make, throw, make throws off his back foot, and you can really see it sap his velocity. Uh, compared to if he tried to step up into it or something like that, which, you know, and with pressure, it's really hard to do that. And not many NFL quarterbacks can even do that. But you did see that could have been a factor in the pick six, because that ball was really uh, uh, quite a floater for him. So, yep. yeah, I mean, me and Chase just, uh, he, he had a different take than I had from it, and it's, that's all, he, he had a valid take too. There's a lot of pressure on these plays, so you can kind of see where he just kind of stared a guy down through it. But uh, there's also, you know, you have to take the positives with the negatives. So I thought that, that this was definitely an interesting set of clips to me because it showcases a, a wider range range of plays that has a lot of similarities to it. And you can also see the gunslinger mentality in a couple of these throws where even with the DB closing down, he still makes the throw and just trusts his arm strength to get it by the DB, which is definitely a gutsy, a gutsy move. Uh, all right, so... Uh, are you good with set four? Would you like to move on to set five? Yeah, absolutely. All right, set five. So <clears throat> set five is another tricky one for me when evaluating a quarterback um, because he has such a strong arm that he's willing to you know, let the ball loose and, and really push the ball downfield. And it's not easy to be you know, insanely accurate on those deep throws. Um, and you see him, he makes some deep throws where they're very, very accurate. Um, but in this set of clips here, uh, the one thing that I noticed is that sometimes on those deep throws, he really rips it and lets the ball get away from him sometimes. Um, and, and really, that just ties back into being, you know, super, super confident in your arm strength. Um, to me, if I'm an evaluator, I'm okay with a couple miss hits on long balls. Um and, and, you know, sacrificing that in order to get that great arm strength. Um, and as a quarterback, you know, you're always taught to miss long. If you're going to miss, you never want to really under underthrow um, a deep ball unless you're throwing it up to a playmaker that can really high point that throw. Um, because more often than not, you're letting that DB have a chance to, to make a play on it. So, um, you know, here, accuracy on the deep throws isn't always there. Uh, but that being said, you know, something that I'd be willing to sacrifice in order to get that arm strength. Right, yeah. This is this is kind of, you know, 
this is what I said about taking the negatives with the positives, and uh, something that you first had issue with, but you, when I tried to explain it a little bit better, you understood, in that he has at times shows the ability to make all the throws and put touch on them, put them where only the wide receiver can go get them, throw some beautiful deep balls at times, uh, but he is he's inconsistent is is where I'm looking for at this and I I noticed I one of the plays I remember the games I remember watching uh, earlier in the year for him that I actually didn't use in these clips because it wouldn't download right is uh, Cal and in the Cal game his wide receivers had some drops and then you go and watch the game and there were several plays where the guy's two or three yards past the line of scrimmage and he just puts it in there as hard as he can. And, I mean, I understand why you got that big arm. You want to, when you want to use it, maybe you're trying to keep it away from a DB. But you, that they, he really makes the job hard for his wide receivers sometimes. And uh, I haven't, uh, you know, looked at how much something like that can affect a, uh, a wide receiver, how much arm strength he can. But I would like to see him put a little more touch on some of those shallower routes, try and lead the quarter, the wide receivers a little bit more and he does just need to work on his deep accuracy a little bit but like you said he does miss long he he does also have times where he just throws a beautiful one right in the right in the bucket where only the wide receiver can get it so it just this is more inconsistency than anything and i'd like to see him work on his touch across the board a little bit but overall not super negative just definitely something that he needs to work on but it's something i think can be can be worked on compared to some of the other things uh, all right, so that was our, our five sets that showed a strength or a weakness. And then now we have set six. And set six is kind of miscellaneous plays that I didn't really think fit in with anything. So how about, do you, would you be okay with going through these clip by clip? Do you have it, uh, you, would you be okay with that and just talking about them each really quickly? Yeah, absolutely. Um, let me pull up set six here. Well, here, I'll talk about the first play while you pull it up. Uh, what oh. I liked in the first play is something that I didn't see super often from him is he senses the pressure and steps up instead of either trying to just throw it up somewhere or just taking the sack or something else. I really like that he steps up from the outside pressure, pressure gets forward, and makes a really good throw. Uh, I mean, he's a little bit low, but overall is a really impressive play to me. I, li- I really like that play because you don't see him deal with pressure super well a lot of the time, so I like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um Moving on here, <clears throat> the second play in set six, where's BYU here, he's showcasing his scrambling ability. <clears throat> and to me, if I'm a scout, this play is going to have me salivating because it, you know, it's showing a 6'6 quarterback utilize that athleticism, escape the pocket, and make a throw rolling out to the left in the back corner of the end zone. Um, one of the hardest throws to make as a right-handed quarterback. And this clip right here really shows why Jacob Eason is a top quarterback draft prospect in this upcoming class um, and why he transferred from Georgia to Washington because he felt that he had every single ability needed to exceed at the college level and needed to, you know, be a legitimate big time NFL prospect. Yeah. Um, I, I really like that he keep, he does keep his eyes downfield as he builds the pocket. Some guys uh, will kind of rely on their athleticism and uh, try and make a move for it as soon as they get out of the pocket. Guys that keep their eyes open downfield, I really like. always really like seeing that. I would say in this play I don't like how quickly he bails out of the pocket, but that could have helped him get a better angle uh, to make that throw. Obviously, it's harder to make a throw rolling out, but getting out to the outside where he's throwing to could have helped him there. It's hard to tell without the All-22. But overall, I do I do think this play is positive. It's really that is a really hard throw to make, and he made it beautifully. So while there are a couple negatives I didn't like about it, I think that overall that that was a positive. There's a really nice play that is uh, very tough to make. And then, uh, clip three. Then rolling into the next clip here, you know he is trusting his arm. It's that gunslinger mentality, forcing it into double coverage. And unfortunately, it gets picked off. Yeah, this um, is the other side of the gunslinger mentality compared to the other positive plays we showed earlier. Yep, you'd like to see him uh, kind of lay off this one and, and either throw it away or, or check the ball down. Um, and, and yep, it's definitely a negative of having that gunslinger mentality. Yes, uh, I mean, if, if I, I just, uh, you know, it's not really ever a play where the player is ever really open. He just he just completely misreads the play. 
And that's that's not something I like to see, like you said. It's like he takes risks, and sometimes it will come back to bite him. Uh, and then uh, I'll also say this next play, um, uh, he had, if we if we look at it, if we uh, slow it down a little bit, which I'll do. Uh, obviously, when I sent it to you, I didn't have it slowed down. But he probably could have stepped up there more than he did. If he, but uh, he didn't feel the pressure coming as well as he could have, and then he uh, rolls out and he th- tries to throw it in pressure, and he just kind of throws up a hail mary. Uh, it was third down as an arm punt, really, but you know I I didn't like the the overall decision making when he felt that pressure coming, didn't see anyone open. He probably should have just tried to get it out of bounds. Yeah, he probably should have stepped up in the pocket. I was not a fan of this play. You know it was gutsy once again, gunslinger mentality, uh, but just overall not a fan of the play. Yeah, and then <clears throat> these last two clips here, back-to-back, back, uh, kind of identical except for the outcome of the play. So both times he's facing pressure. He spins out, shows his escapability in the pocket. The first clip, <clears throat> he launches downfield into double coverage, um, avo- avoids a turnover there. But then the second clip escapes out of the pocket, um, makes a throw with pressure in his face, and it's very accurate and converts a fourth and two. So I think these last two clips really highlight, you know, who Jason Jacob Eason is as a quarterback. Um, you know, you're going to see someone who's fearless and who's going to take chances, and sometimes those chances are going to pay off, and other times, you know, they're going to result in the in the turnovers. And the the good news about that is is that he's confident and gutsy enough to take those chances, and it's going to be up to his coach at at the next level to really you know, teach him how to minimize those turnovers, which I think is very, very possible. Um, and, you know, really hone in on that arm talent and, and you know, lead him in the right direction. Yeah, I would say that overall, um, so what, how about, yeah, you, you talked a little bit about overall thoughts, but yeah, I, I would say that overall Jacob Eason is, He's a bit of a he's a moldable piece of clay, you know. It's nice clay too, but he's still he's kind of that un, unmolded clay. He's just a ball of clay. Uh, maybe some of these other guys are a little bit more a uh, little bit more on their way there, I would say. But Easton definitely has all the tools, and he has a nice mentality of trying to get the ball where it needs to go. But he does have some flaws that he really needs to clean up. And you know, it, it's going to be really interesting. Uh, obviously, we won't have access to it, but. Uh, seeing the the mental side on the whiteboard uh, when he gets in those meetings with teams, I think is gonna be really interesting because just uh, you know you can't always tell how a player is gonna turn out from their college because there's a lot of things with that situation that could be different from player to player. But Easton definitely has all the tools that you want. So I was uh, you know I like him, but I think he definitely needs to go to the right situation with a coach willing to work with him uh, in a way that will kind of allow him to grow. Agreed. All right. Well, Chase, thank you very much for joining me. No problem. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what quarterback we will do next, but we will be back uh, to do another one of these videos. Um, Maybe I'll see. So uh, hopefully uh, this one is well received. Hopefully everyone likes it. Uh, So uh, please definitely uh, come back for the next video and uh, subscribe to the channel. There will be a lot more good videos coming along. My intro to scouting series, which I put out the last video uh, yesterday or the day before, uh, is uh, off to a good start, and more of those will be coming soon. So thank you very much. LB3 out.